In the movie, Anchorman actor Will Ferrell plays blow dried airhead news anchor Ron Burgundy. Well, what many people don't know is that character was loosely based on a member of the KYW TV news team. Anchor Mort Krim was part of what was known in the 1970s as the Dream Team, broadcasting beside Vince Leonard and Jessica Savage. In his memoir titled Mort Krim Anchored, a journalist's search for the truth, the legendary journey of the real Ron Burgundy, Krim takes readers through 45 years of his career in broadcasting, including his time here at KYW-TV in Philadelphia. We're so happy that Mort Krim is joining us this morning. Hello, Mort. Hey, how are you, Jim? I'm doing very well. You know, I followed your career over the decades, found it hilarious that Burgundy was based on you. I mean, you're about as serious as they get. I understand that it was your voice, the voice of God, as it's been called, that was part of the inspiration for the Burgundy character. Well, that's what uh, Will Ferrell says. I was uh, quite surprised. I met him at the after party uh, after Anchorman 2 was released. We attended the premiere as his guest. And he complimented me on showing such good humor uh, about the uh, parody. And I said, well, frankly, Will, if you had billed this movie as a documentary, I'd really be pissed. But I, <laughs> I said, as parody, you know, I always enjoyed Ted Knight uh, when he was on the Mary Tyler Moore show. He played the same kind of a, uh, of a buffoon uh, anchor man. I think any of us in any profession have to be able to laugh at ourselves and have to see some of the humor that exists in, in even the most serious profession. You know, you were really good natured about the spoof. I understand it was the producer, director of the Anchorman movie uh, that grew up in Philly watching you. So that's that's why he learned about you. Uh, that was my understanding that Adam Mackey had uh, had watched me and he, he got some of the old uh, videotapes. You remember videotapes, don't mm -hmm, you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, back in the day and uh, showed them to Will and the two of them decided, you know, there's the makings of a, of a good parody, a good spoof uh, about a male and female anchor team and the tension that uh, exists between them. And, you know, Jessica was one of the very first to uh, anchor uh, primetime uh, newscasts uh, in, a, in a local market. And uh, so she was in that sense a pioneer and they thought this uh, had the makings of a, of a good comedy. You know, as you mentioned, you were part of the KYW Dream Team in the 70s, working along Jessica Savage and Vince Leonard. You anchored with Marsha Rose Shestak. What was it like being part of that team back then? It really was wonderful. And I think what people saw on the air was exactly what we were. We were a team of friends. We were people who took our work seriously, uh, never ourselves, I don't think, not too much anyway. Uh, we had a good time. I think that was reflected in the rapport that we had with the audience. And uh, it's interesting to me, having been gone from Philadelphia for uh, uh, 44 years now, was when I signed off my last broadcast there, that I still get uh, emails and uh, occasional postings on Facebook from people who remember that team. Uh, Jessica, uh, Bill Custer, uh, Al Meltzer was yeah. our sportscaster, mm -hmm. Vince Leonard. Uh, sadly, I'm the only one of that team that is still left, along with my good friend, Marsha Rose. Uh, Marsha Rose and I did the noon show together, and uh, she remains a, a very dear friend. Anything in particular that you remember about the city of Philadelphia and the people here? It was a great city. Uh, we loved everything about it. Frank Rizzo was mayor at that time, a very colorful character for those who may remember him and uh, the year that I got there the Flyers won the Stanley Cup and so we got started off uh, with a very exciting year it was a great town in which to cover the news it was uh, because of the history of Philadelphia it was just a wonderful place to have friends come in and and uh, tour them around the city and uh, show them Independence Hall, which of course was right across the street from mm -hmm. BYW at that time. I should point out, you were always a serious journalist and covered stories around the globe, but I should point out that you also had a sense of humor, had to improvise from time to time like we do on the air, like the time that you filled in as the mystery weatherman. Let's take a look <laughs> at this clip. Will the mystery weatherman come in and sign in, please? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Actually, Bill Custer is off because he's being interviewed today for a very big job. They want him to uh, wash the elephants at the zoo. You guys had a lot of fun on that set, didn't you? <laughs> you know, we did. And I think the news, uh, even as it is today, was uh, pretty grim at times. And we tried to lighten it up. 
uh, it was a way of developing a rapport with the audience. We were in their, their living rooms, dens, bedrooms every single night uh, at 5, 36, and 11. And I think they got to think of us as friends and being a part of their, uh, of their lives. And so it didn't hurt, I don't think, occasionally to, uh, to bring a little humor into it. We tried never to go over the, over the edge and remember that we were dealing with some pretty serious matter most of the time. I would like to tell people that they can get a copy of my memoir at, at uh, mortcrimspeaks.com, and they'll get a personally autographed copy if they order it through the website. Sounds good. Once again, the book is titled Mort Krim, Anchored, a journalist's search for the truth. Thanks so much, uh, Mort, for joining us. It's been a real treat. And in the words of anchorman Ron Burgundy, stay classy, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You take care.